the cost of making Avalanche subnet, I think was like three or $400,000. Are we going to charge the small Midwest regional bank $400,000 to pay the fees of, to pay Avalanche, right? To pay the blockchain wouldn't make any sense. So first of all, the unit economics were all messed up. Polkadot had a lot of the same issues too. They were thinking that people were going to rent blockchains like this was some sort of Klaus Schwab WEF blockchain thing or something. No, we're not going to rent blockchains. You're going to, that kind of defeats the whole purpose. So we came up with the idea of, well, first of all, the token, the unit economics don't even work out. Why should we, why are we going to work our butts off and then spend all the money on, on basically essentially gas fees, right? It makes no sense. So the next issue was looking at Avalanche, we recognized that there was no identity tooling. No one had built any identity tooling. Are we going to build? And if we build that for our own fork, well, then it will work for Avalanche as well, right? So we can open source that and share it and so forth. Um, so the, the main issue, one of the big technical issues I see with DeFi, and that's where Metallicus is focused, is payments and trading and lending and DeFi and all the financial activities. That's what we really love. Um, we recognize that Avalanche, although it's a superior chain, lacked a subnet that made sense for DeFi because the EVM chain, the C chain on Avalanche, even though that's the trend to write Solidity code and so forth, it's just not the most efficient system. And the end users don't really care, right? They don't really, it's the developers that are more focused on that. So we recognize that, hey, um, everything we've built over here with XPR and, and building off of the technology of Antelope of EOS, it's really good, but EOS missed the mark. In 2017, it was going to be the Ethereum killer. Now it's 2023 and EOS is struggling to stay relevant. They're trying to fit all these weird things inside of EOS when EOS should be trying to fit itself inside of something else like Snowman. So why are we going to cram EVM into Antelope? IBC, all of this stuff. It's just a playing a game of catch up to stuff that's already popular and is already built. And why would you leave Ethereum for, um, for EOS, right? And why would you leave Ethereum for C chain if, it, if, if all it is is just faster and fees could be the same price and so forth, right? That's where the L2s I think are, are going to gain a lot of traction. So Metallicus has always been focused on payments, trading, banking, compliance, these aspects. But we also are really focused on trends and, and where we see the, you know, the crypto landscape going. I've always been trying to think 10 years out and trying to predict the future. That's why I make those predictions. And over time, I've gotten better and better at kind of making those, uh, those, uh, uh, those predictions. And, you know, Avalanche was one of those things that I predicted this will be huge. This will be a top, this will be a top coin at some point, and we can take that technology, we can make it better. In Avalanche, you have the P, C, and X chain, which is the P platform chain for staking, the C chain, which is EVM, and the X chain for cross-chain transfer, right? But it was missing a efficient subnet. C chain is not efficient. When um, Stars Arena got, got big and Avalanche started having a lot of uh, activity on chain, what happened? Fees went through the roof the same EVM problem surfaced. Trader Joe, very cool, but has the same issues of MEV. And I saw a post about it a while back where somebody had said, you know, Avalanche doesn't have MEV. And it's like, actually for the people in the MEV industry, they call it Mevalanche. So <laughs> don't tell me that. And, and um, uh, XPR does not. The Antelope world does not have MEV because of the way the resources are designed. So when we switch to A-Chain, uh, metal blockchain is like a better blockchain for banking with the core tools, with the fourth subnet that makes sense for DeFi and trading. We started with the L0 vision from the beginning. I think a lot of the top coins tend to pivot their thesis like the wind based upon, you know, oh, it's AI is hot now or, oh, uh, um, metaverse is hot now or whatever. And, you know, Everybody does it a little bit, but Metallicus has always stayed true to its payments and banking vision, as you can see. And so that's kind of the commitment that you get from the core dev of Metallicus with Metal Blockchain. You get the A-chain as well, which I think is a fundamental upgrade. And 
um, as we build it out, we have more and more compliance tooling, and we are going to start to take some of those uh, some of those parts of my vision and shift the way that the core chain was built. There are certain things that we still want to keep, we want to tweak. Um, although we think Ava Labs and Neiman have done an amazing job, there are certain things we want to tweak. And I think that when we started to make some of these um, big partnership announcements, there was a lot of saltiness because, oh, well, it should be, it should be AVAX or it should be XRP, or it should be this or whatever. Um, the reason why we're making all that progress is because we're speaking the language of banks and compliance and we have a laser focus. Um, and so not only do you get that, that fork sub chain, but we're also going to pioneer web authentication on metal blockchain. We'll probably open source that and it could go over to Avalanche and other chains as well. But, um, something that's unique about XPR is it has web authentication as part of the chain. So you can use web off wallet, for example, or other people could build similar wallets. You don't have to leave the browser. You can use the secure enclave. Again, that's another thing that when I think about user experience, are the first billion users going to be, you know, clicking out of their browser, opening a, a third party wallet, getting hacked, losing their seed phrase, all this stuff, or are they just gonna do it right in Safari or right in Chrome with face ID, right? Or the touch sensor or whatever. Um, and is everyone going to be carrying around a trays or a ledger in their pocket in 10 years from now? No, absolutely not. Um, so these are like the things that we're thinking about and we're planning on just essentially making it a much more user-friendly experience by modifying some of the core code with a chain. We've already taken a fundamental departure from antelope and we were have, we had a consortium meeting today cause there's a new version of antelope coming out and the consortium asked me you know, well, what does this mean for the future of XPR? Are we just gonna keep upgrading these new Antelope versions? And I said, no, I mean, we could, and we'll, we'll discuss this as a community, but I don't see the value in the vision of trying to play catch up and say, well, EOS can put EVM in it, IBC, and then everyone's gonna care. They're not. Um, it's the new novel things that create a good user experience that create a good developer experience that will attract people, not trying to ram some bunch of things into a little pocket and say, oh, look, we've got it all. That's not the way to do it. That's like the, you know, the PC that's like, oh, this PC is, you know, has this speed and it's the fastest, cheapest, whatever. Or you could think different. You could have Apple that, yeah, it's going to be fast. It's going to be up there, but they're going to really be thoughtful in the design. They're going to be thoughtful in the marketing. They're going to be thoughtful in creating a holistic uh, top to bottom platform that's cohesive where you're not using all these third party apps and different things. When I look at people having had a bad time in crypto, more often than not, it's because they have to use all these disparate apps that are not connected and somewhere along the value chain, they lose keys or get uh, money stolen or, you know, whatever. Um, I think crypto is a hard enough ecosystem to enter. So you want to have something cohesive and, to Ava Labs credit, they've done a great job with the core wallet. They've, you know, they built a bunch of stuff, but Metallicus has arguably built more around that side from Metal Pay, Metal X. We don't rely on third parties um, to make the experience good. You know, when Base Coinbase Layer 2 launched, what happened? It was a third party DEX with the bald beam token, and it just turned out to be a sea of rugs. And this is from the brand that you're supposed to trust. So we, we plan to do it different. Um, and if banks and financial institutions are going to come on board, they're not going to be tolerating bald tokens and rugs and disparate apps. They want a cohesive ecosystem that they can rely on and they can white label. And that's kind of the vision. Um, so a lot of stuff we're changing, but I would also say, you know, a lot of the core stuff stays the same and, and that's what brings a lot of value. Awesome. Thanks a lot for the, the in-depth answer. One, um, one thing, Karu, who's hosting the space, has been going hard now um, for a week back to back. Um, one space, I think, was 24 hours. So I'm not sure what he got sleep in on that one, but uh, I don't think he fell asleep in the space like I did um, previously. So at least he didn't go down that path. But um, I guess, do you have a message for Karu? And then do you have a message for the wider community and how they can help him? you know, get involved in driving XPR network forward. Yeah, Karu, thank you so much for hosting these spaces. I've been watching and sometimes lurking on other accounts, but um, 
it's really it's really great to see new members come in the community and you hosting these like 24 hour spaces is awesome. I love the vibe with like the music and keeping it fun and friendly. I think sometimes the spaces get so focused on one thing. We forget that like we're people and, you know, having a good, forget about having a good time. And I think you really, you really uh, cheer people up. And I get a lot of messages, people saying how awesome you're doing. So congratulations and keep, keep up the good work and love what you're doing. Um, to everyone here, you know, thank you so much for all the support and being involved in the governance proposals and getting out there and showing people what's up. You know, it's crazy to me that you have like the top companies out there like Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong saying, we're going to make fast and free payments and whatever. It's like we already did it. We have it over here. Our problem is not enough people know about us. I, I found it very funny that you have to navigate through Coinbase wallet in advanced mode to get to simple mode to have them pay your gas fees and ETH for you. That's hilarious. Um, we, we built it. We have the real solution. We have the real um, vertical apple of crypto, if you will. Now the, the hard part is getting it out there, getting more people exposed to it, you know, getting the world to know about it because there are platforms out there that are being shilled that don't even work, that aren't even close to this. And you have the biggest companies in the space saying, oh, this is the way to go. It's like, but that's trash. <laughs> Sorry for saying it, but it is like it's a trash experience and it, compared to, you know, and it's not all bad, but for where we want to go, it should feel like you're using Venmo. It should feel like you're using Zelle or Revolut and it should be seamless and easy to use. And there really should be no navigate through advanced mode to get to simple mode. If you have to do that, you've already lost, right? And so um, I think, you know, the, the next part of this is basically when I look at the failures of the past, you have these big entities that kind of, you know, rise to a lot of power because they do shady things. We all know about it. Some of them are my predictions have already come true. And, you know, we've yet to see a real community rise up and have that, you know, ownership and say in the direction of the protocol. Um, the grants, the, the way that things work, uh, you know, people have been used to uh, blockchain dictatorships with all vaporware, with mostly vaporware and disparate third party apps. And they rise to power through shady, weird things. Now, finally, we have an Apple of crypto with a company that is not controlling it, but basically handing it off to the community and saying, now it's our time to as a, as a decentralized movement, get this thing out there. Sort of like, I look at it like Dogecoin, right? Very, that's why I like Dogecoin so much because it doesn't have that. It doesn't have central rules. I, I can tell you right now, the Dogecoin Foundation, just a you know, few guys and gals in a room and it's not some huge, massive operation. It's really authentic. Um, and so for us, you know, the next step is for the community to really own it. And I've been, you know, thank you, James, and everyone who has been pushing proposals and getting people to vote. Um, the future is in our hands. And unlike some other chains and ecosystems where it's an illusion of decentralization, we really have it. So now's the time for us to step up and to embrace it. And the future is dependent upon us and not me, not Metallicus. I'm going to do my part and my team's going to do its part and we might have a big you know, impact, but we don't run it. And I think this is the message that I want to get out is you know, now more than ever, um, Metallicus has pretty much finished the Phoenix proposal. We built everything we said we were going to do from 2020. And very few teams do that. They'll say, oh, it's going to do this and it's going to do this. Metallicus nailed every piece and it works really, really well. And I'm a stickler. I get in there and I, I press every button and I'm constantly, you know, dog fooding the software we built here. But now the community has this Ferrari. What are we going to do with it? And I'll, I'll leave it there. Awesome, thank you. Um, just conscious of time, how much do you have time for maybe one or two more, Matt? I, I got to run, unfortunately, but thank you guys so much for having me. And um, I, if I can pop back in later today, if you guys have another one going, I'll, I'll try to stop back in. Okie dokie, awesome. Um, well, thank you for the time that you've given and shout out to yourself and the team. Um, if you can rejoin, great. If not, I'm sure there's a good reason for it. Um, but, you know, exciting stuff, hopefully, before Christmas and the New Year period. Um, yeah, with that, I'll hand over uh, back to you, Kerry.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's MJ. Telling you about the rings. Telling you about the winners. This is the community. This is who we follow. This is who we believe.